today I want to show you one my game, which actually I played yesterday. It was a tournament. I played only three games. Uh, I lost the first one, but I won uh, next two games. And uh, I played for black this game uh, with international master, uh, Eric Rosen, who has rating 24-60. So um, he was, of course, strongest player than, uh, than I am. And um, I'm sure that in the future you will play the strongest players. Never afraid to play the ZRAM because you have always chance to win the game, to make a draw and of course to lose. So in this game happened d4, knight f6, knight f3, e6, bishop f4, d5. Somebody know the name of opening? Queen's pawn game. Remember about this, okay? So e3, c5, with the idea to attack the center, c3 to defend the center, queen b6, what is the main idea of this move? Tell me. To attack the pawn on b2. So why decided to play queen b3 in this position? Actually, I forgot this opening because I didn't play this opening a lot of time. So, I push c4 because I was sure that um, it's correct move and I made this move very quickly. And uh, I thought that my opponent will eat my queen, exchange on b6. And I can push quickly b5, b4 in the future to solve my problem with uh, double pawns. And that's okay, position for black. But then he played in this position um, queen c2, I understood that I made a mistake, and who can tell me why? Why c4 was a mistake for black? Because after c4, look, all my pawns are on the uh, light squares. c4, d5, e6, f7, right? I have um, light squares bishop here, and this bishop is bad. I cannot develop it in the future because this bishop has no uh, good squares. If I will develop to d7, okay, but still these pawns, e6, d5, c4, block it. Do you understand this? That's why c4, remember, it's a strategy, um, blunder and bad move. Okay, uh, it was interesting for me in this position to play queen d6, bishop takes d6, queen takes d6, and to exchange this um, good dark squares bishops. b3, for example, c takes b3, a takes b3, castle king side, knight d2, bishop d7, bishop d3, knight c6. It's better position for white, but it was interesting for me. <coughs> I didn't play this move, I played knight c6, developed my knight, and he played knight bd2. It was not good move, because um, in this position, this opening, it's a typical idea for black to play knight h5. And uh, with the idea to exchange my knight on the bishop. Because bishop on f4 is strong. Do you understand this? And uh, mm, bishop, this bishop on f4 has not good square. So why should play in this position mm, for example, h3, it's a typical idea with idea knight h5 and bishop h2. So now I cannot exchange the knight on the bishop, right? And also it was more active moving this position for white h4. Maybe to attack the king in the future. But why decided to play knight bd2? So knight h5 was correct move. I still uh, decided to develop my pieces. Bishop e7. Still h3 was good move for white in this position with the idea to prevent knight h5. But um, why decided to play b3 to attack my pawn on c4 and in the future to push the uh, pawns in the center? So c takes b3, what will you do here for white? Which move? Tell me please. Why a takes b3 is correct move? 
Yes, we open the uh, A file for the rook, right? And also our pawns go to the center, which is very important in the middle of the game, right? Okay, so again I should play knight h5 here with the idea to exchange the bishop, uh, knight on the bishop. I played castle kingside. h3 again was a good move for white, but white decided to play bishop d3. So in this position I played bishop d7. Knight e5. What do you think about this move? Is it good move or bad for white? Tell me, please. Yes, first of all, uh, knight on e5 is in a strong square e5 in the center, right? And uh, what else? What is the tactical idea here for white after knight e5? What white want to do? Tell me, please. Okay, so if white to move, what white will do? So knight attack the bishop on d7 and... Tell me please. Very well. So white won't take the bishop on d7, knight takes d7 and then take the pawn on h7, right? Okay. So that's why I played in this position a rook fd8. But it was interesting also move for me rook a c8. What is the main idea of this move? So if knight takes d7, knight takes d7 and bishop h7. Same idea as before. King h8, right? And what happened in this position? Okay, if for example bishop will go back to d3 square, tell me please. Knight v4 is dangerous, right? And if c takes, b4 of course rook takes c2. So after queen b1, rook can take the pawn on c3. That's why it's not good move, bishop d3, and white should play queen b1 immediately. What black will play here? Tell me please. g6, what is the idea of this move? To trap the bishop, what white should play? Bishop take g6, f take g6, queen take g6, and if, for example, rook f6, queen g4, rook g8, queen h5, king g7, h4, rook h8, it's in clear position. Uh, white has compensation, of course, for the mm, um, knight. Three pawns. But it's not so easy to attack um, my king because you have only bishop. Uh, queen and uh, you, sh you should spend some mm, tempos to improve your rook. For example, rook h3, rook g3. So I have time to defend my king. But it was dangerous. Um, I was not sure about this position. Can I defend my king or no? And I decided just protect my uh, bishop on d7. So uh, white played in this position g4. Uh, and as for me, it was too early, and it's a weak pawn. It's, it's, it's a weak move for the king side. So it was better to play castle king side. And if knight e5, bishop takes e5, it's better position for white. Because white has strong bishop on d3, strong bishop on e5. Then in the future, maybe white will play knight f3 to improve the knight and attack my king on the king side. But why decided to play, to uh, attack my king immediately and g4. So 
still rook a c8 was interesting move in this position. If knight d7, knight takes d7. If queen bishop takes h7, king h8, bish queen b1, e5, d takes e5, knight c takes e5, bishop f5, and rook c takes c3. It's equal position because white king still in the center. So I can defend my king. It's not so dangerous that my king is on h8. It's weak, of course, but white cannot use it right now. And uh, mm, I don't like this pawn on g4 because pawn should be, of course, on g2. And after castle, white skin will be okay, right? I played in this in this position g6. What do you think about this move? Tell me, please. Is it good move or no? It's a little weak for king, right? Because my squares g7, h6 are weak, and white can use it in the future to play bishop h6, for example. Also, mm, maybe white can push h4, h5 to attack this pawn on g6, or maybe to sacrifice the pieces, knight g6, f take g6, bishop take g6, h take g6, queen take g6, something like this. And it's really dangerous for black. In this position, it was interesting to play for white, knight takes d7, knight takes d7, castle king side, if e5, bishop g3, rook d8, and queen b2. So white have two bishops, and this, for me it's a little better to play this position for white. Two bishops are very strong, right? Okay. So. Why decided to play h4 immediately? And again, as for me, it's too early because king still is in the center. And why decided to win the game immediately? But of course, uh, it's impossible because black also made good move to develop pieces. And why black should lose the game immediately? So I played rook a c8. It was interesting for me in this position to play knight takes c5, d takes c5, knight e4. Bishop takes, d takes, knight takes, e4, bishop c6, castle king side, bishop takes, queen takes, and rook a c8. Here I am without pawn, but I have compensation for this pawn because I attack the pawn on c3, also b3. I want to play in the future rook d2 to use the second rank. And bishop on f4 is bad because pawn e5 block it, so white had have a um, bad pawn structure, and uh, also pawn on h4 is weak. So that's why it was possible for me to sacrifice the pawn, but I have compensation here. Rook a c8, I played knight takes d7, and here black has choice. Black can take rook takes d7 or knight takes d7. Which move is better? So in this position, it's better to play knight takes d7 with the idea after queen b2 to push e5 to open the center. Because king is in the center. And if king is in the center, the main idea for you to open the center, right? It's a rule. Strategy idea in the middle of the game. I played rook takes d7 and mm, he played queen d1. <coughs> it was interesting for me to push e5 immediately. d takes e5, knight e4, bishop takes, d takes, queen b1, knight a5, b4, and rook takes d2 to sacrifice the rook like this. King takes d2, queen c6, and still I have compensation because white skin is weak, right? White skin is without castle. King e1 and bishop takes h4. But I decided to prepare uh, if I move and I played in this position, uh, first of all, bishop d6, which was a little slow. 
because he could play bishop takes d6, rook takes g5, knight h5, and bishop e2 to attack my knight on h5. If knight g7, c4. And it's better position for white. So he played bishop g5. What black should play in this position? What is the main idea of move bishop g5? Tell me please. To attack the knight on f6. So what black should play? If we should be 7, it's too passive because uh, actually I moved from e7 square to d6. And after bishop e7, you lost the tempo. What else except bishop e7? You can defend the piece. What else? What is your strategy idea? Knight to e8. Also, we can move with that piece, right? So, knight e8. And it was interesting for him to play queen f3 in this position, knight d8, c4, d takes c4, b takes c4, bishop b4, it's equal position now, because bishop g5 was not good move. But it was better, he decided to move e4 immediately, and I should play knight d8 in this position. What is the main idea of move knight d8, tell me please. Rook can capture the pawn on c3, right? Okay, good. So, rook takes c3, it's dangerous right now after knight d8. That's why why should play knight b1, then d takes e4, your idea, bishop takes e4, bishop e7, bishop takes e7, rook takes e7, castle king side, and knight d6 still equal. But I played d takes e4, I saw very interesting uh, tactical idea in this position after knight takes e4, and who can tell me what did I play in this position? Black to move. I decided to sacrifice pieces here. How black can do it? Knight takes d4, yes, I played this move. And if, for example, c takes d4, what will you do? Queen takes d4, not good right now, but it's better to play, first of all, bishop b4, king e2, then push the pawn to f5, because if queen d4 here, rook c1, Rook takes c1, bishop takes c1, and actually it's better position in winning for white. So it's better to open uh, the center like f5 because king is in the center, right? g takes f5, e takes f5, knight g3, and queen takes d4. If bishop e3, queen b2, king f3, king h8, rook c1, rook c1, queen takes c1, queen takes rook takes rook takes d3 rook c8 rook takes b3 rook takes e8 king g7 king g2 a5 and that's interesting end game but i'm not sure that black has enough compensation so it was very long combination of course and it's impossible to calculate till the end everything i didn't see also but I feel that it should be uh, interesting for black and that's why I decided to sacrifice my knight. So after um, knight takes d4, he decided to play bishop e3. And now what black should play here? What is the main idea of move bishop e3? Yes, why the one take the knight on d4, of course. So? Yes, yeah, so what black should play? Can I move as my knight right now? 
I can move, but you will eat my king, so it's not good for black, of course. So I'll show you this move because it's really uh, not easy to see this move. I took the pawn on c3. So look, I lost my rook. But what black can play here? Why I decided to make this move? How black can make a pin here? White skin still in the center. You know that it's dangerous. The main idea in the opening to make castle quickly. So, how black can use it? Tell me. Queen b4, okay, it's interesting move, but uh, black has better. Improve your idea. Tell me, please. Bishop b4, to improve the bishop and uh, to open my rook on d file, which is very important because this rook will attack the uh, bishop on d3 in the future and queen on d1. So in this position it was interesting for white played bishop d2 to defend the knight on c3, knight takes b3, queen takes b3, rook takes d3, queen c2 and queen d4. And actually it's better position for white. Black has big compensation for the rook, of course. Uh, free uh, pawns and strong attack on the king. Also g4 pawn is weak, h4 pawn is weak. Um, the pawns actually are not good for white. But it was the best line for white. White didn't see this move. White played king f1. So what is the best move for black here? I mean, yes, of course, bishop takes c3, f rook c1, now what, tell me please, bishop b2, mm. it's not the best move because after bishop b2 my uh, c file is weak and white can use it, white can play rook c8 with the idea to attack my king and attack my knight on e8. So black has better move. How we can defend our bishop on c3 and to attack white pieces? How we can do this? I played queen c6 in this position. So now white cannot take my bishop on c3 right and also what is the main idea of this move to attack the rook on h1 very well so why should play rook h3 now what is the best move for black here how black can sacrifice the pieces and have some compensation and the keys Knight takes b3, very well. And if queen takes b3? Rook takes d3. It was happening in the game, but um, rook b1 in this position was better move for white here. If knight c5, bishop takes c5, queen takes c5. So it was better for white to exchange this bishop from e3 and to have different squares bishops. It's better position still for black, but uh, it's not so big advantage as after uh, this line, rook h3, knight takes b3, queen takes b3, and rook d3. So white played in this position queen c2. What black should play here? What is the main idea of move queen c2? Yes, to attack the rook on d3. So how black can defend it? Down, please. Queen c4. Also, what is the main idea of this move, queen c4? Tell me, please. Rook d2 to play, or rook takes c3. <coughs> so, to use the strong uh, queen on c4 and uh, that white skin on f1 is weak. 
That's why I decided to play queen e2. I played in this position b5, but actually knight d6 was better because you should improve your pieces always and to develop it. If rook g3, knight e4, rook f3, and now b5. Knight on e5 has in, uh, uh, is in the strong square and that's why it's good. But I pushed b5 immediately and it was interesting for white to play rook g3, queen d5, bishop takes a7, rook takes, f takes, b4. It's still a winning position for me, but it was better choice than white played in the game. White played h5 immediately. So... I could I could push um, a5 and it's winning position for me because then a4 a3 a2 and they won queen. But I decided to improve my knight first of all. Again, it was better for white to play knight g3 uh, rook g3 here to protect the pawn on uh, g4 and after knight e4 to play rook g1, queen d5. It's winning position, but. I think it was the best answer for white. White decided to play king g1 in this posi position. So what black should play in this position? What is the best move? Tell him, please. Okay, how we can do it? You have choice. You can take the pawn on g4 with the knight or you can take with the queen. Which move is better? <coughs> As usual, one move is good, one move is bad. So you should think before to make your choice. So what is the difference? So after queen takes g4, queen takes g4, knight takes g4, we will exchange the queens and still attack the bishop on e3. Is it good for black to exchange the queens or no? No, why not? Let's calculate the pieces. Who is better, white or black? So white have a rook and black have a knight and how many pawns for the rook? Yes, but uh, I mean that um, black have in this position knight and four pawns for the rook. Right? Knight and four pawns. So that's why it's a winning position for black. And end game is winning. And queen take g4, it's a strategy good move for white. Because if you want only one pawn, the main idea for you in the middle of the game to exchange the pieces because end game is winning for you. Do you understand this? Remember about this rule. And it's easy to win for me right now. After king f1, what will you do? Is it good for you to exchange the pieces? Why? Because black have more material and end game is winning for black, right? Same idea. Rook takes c3. Yes, rook takes c3 still. We exchange all pieces because end game is winning for black. f takes e3, now what? Tell me please. If bishop d2, for example, I can play rook c8 check and then king e2 to defend my pawn on e3. So it's not dangerous. Which move is better? If g takes h5, what white will do? Take the bishop, so it's a blunder. What else? Tell me please. B4. If you have pass pawns in the end game, the main idea for you to push that pass pawns, right? And also, after b4, I protected my bishop on c3. h6. Now what? Come, please. 
possible king f8, but I decided to push a5. Same idea. If you have postponed, the main idea for you to push the pawn. So it was the idea a4, a3, a2, a1, queen. Do you understand this? King e2. Now I decided to play king f8. Uh, it's possible also to push a4, but I didn't want to help him to develop the rook. For example, rook d1, king f8, rook d8, king e7, rook a8, a3, and it's still a winning position for black, but mm, as for me, rook on a8, it's more dangerous than rook on c1. <coughs> That's why I decided to cut the rook on um, d file after move king f8. So if, for example, rook d1 in this position, king e7, and now rook cannot go to uh, d7 or d8 square. King d3. A4, still push the pawn here, yeah? king c2, king e7, king should move to the center in the end game, it's a rule, king b1, f5, rook uh, g1, and it was interesting for me to play g5 in this position immediately, after rook g5, I had moved b3, the same idea, a3, a2, a1, queen, and he has no time to stop my pawn. But I decided <coughs> to play king f6 because it's still winning position for me. Rook d1, g5, rook d7, king g6, rook d6, king takes h6, h6 rook takes e6, king h5, rook a6, a3, of course, don't lose this important pawn. King a2, g4, king b3, g3, and if rook a7, what black can play here? What is the best move? Thank h6 possible, it's still winning for you, but what else? King g6 to defend the pawn on h7, good, what else? Yes, it's possible. What else? Tell me, please. Pawn g2, and what if uh, rook takes h7? Tell me, please. King g6, and what happened after this? Rook can, uh, cannot stop the pawn, yeah, rook cannot go to h1 square because g takes h1 queen, rook cannot go to h8 square because bishop takes h8, and it's winning position for black. So after this move, king g6, white resign. So you see, it's a very beautiful game. I sacrificed pieces a lot, like Tal. Tal, it was, he was... Uh, Mm, eight world champion and he liked it to sacrifice with the pieces and to have compensation for it so I wish you to use these tactical ideas also in your games and to have compensation and to win so beautiful games